Now, as it happens, <clears throat> we we saw the measures to to reduce the eddy current because it has got losses associated with it, and in huge machines, even even a two percent, three percent loss becomes a huge, huge, huge amount of loss. Okay. Also, minimization of heat has its repercussions on using 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 different classes of insulations and that also saves you money okay and as it happens with all the evil things there are also certain good good impacts of these and, and there are certain advantages that we can find in the eddy currents so so advantages of eddy currents okay advantages of eddy currents now the first advantage is it is used in magnetic breaking of trains now one of the advantages of a train is that its wheel is made up of metal okay so it has a metal wheel okay now what happens if if i am also drawing the side view if on both sides of this you have an arrangement okay which is an electromagnet so so say i have this kind of arrangement and when this wheel is rotating this is the side view okay this is the side view someone someone looking from here what someone actually looking from here okay like this so 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 he'll see it like that now if i switch on this current then there will be ad currents produced here and as that that so so suppose this is the area as that lamina was getting dampened similarly what happens every everything that enters this area you consider it to be a lamina and while entering it will it will face a face a force that will that will that will reduce this this velocity right same same while going out when it tries to enter it it will not be entering as freely fine so in this area there will be a small push given by the eddy currents right the interaction of the eddy currents and and the and the magnet here right and that will slow down this wheel it is it is a continuous thing this is a solid disk okay this is a solid disk the rail wheels they are made up of iron and they are solid iron disks fine so so every time it has to keep on entering right if it keeps on moving the new the new patches of of this keep on entering that area and every time they enter that area they will be dampened so what happens there is no mechanical mechanical touch but still there will be a breaking in the train fine now what is the advantage the advantage is that my mechanical otherwise otherwise there is a very simple kind of thing that is used for breaking the trains there is a cast iron or or now some composite material block that comes and straight away ramps onto the wheel okay and 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 there will be a lot of heat generated so this gets this gets um abraded okay this gets abraded and and there is a lot of heat and, and at times there are there is so much heat that that this wheel starts to melt okay before that this melts then then what happens if this melts what will happen you go without a brake 
you know and that that's something that is that is the that is a nightmare and and it's not that it is kind of some some conjecture it happens that the block melts it drops and now the train cannot break the electromagnets also produce heat yeah but but they are not but they are not touching it right they are kind of separate and what happens the heat is produced in the area that comes into into its into its contact and then it moves moves away so all the while while it comes from here to here it dissipates that heat okay so though obviously it has to get heated it has to get heated because what is happening the mechanical energy is being dissipated into heat energy okay so obviously that will happen but it is far far better than this okay so so ad currents are used to used for breaking the trains eddy currents are used for breaking the trains and reduce its mechanical wear and tear now that becomes very significant that becomes significant very very significant okay because you know these have to be changed periodically the wheel has to be checked for for some some friction and striations okay maybe some some gouging has been done some due to heat it has got deformed okay so you 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 are able to avoid all that paraphernalia right and that that's a great advantage so we are entered due to due to conventional brakes fine there is an igatpuri kasara section which is the steepest in the indian railways there are three such it is one is 236 igatpuri to kasara when you go ahead of nasik 50 km towards bombay fine on a train then then it slopes like that now what happens if the train is allowed to go go in a free fall then it attains the speeds which are dangerous dangerously high so what happens the train comes with its brakes on all the way on a, about it's about about a 5 km section so even if you if you shut the engines down still due to the slope it attains dangerously high speeds so so the train keeps on coming coming with its brakes on and it so happened that the brakes melted and the train went to when it went into a free fall right that actually happened that that happened that went and rammed a good train fully loaded with coal that was standing on kasara and there was a huge kind of thing, thing a, a whole 5000 tons of coal was sprayed onto the passengers and and how many got buried under that okay so so the whole station got got under that coal so so what they have devised that now you come here and there is an intermediate section there you have to per force wait so there is a there is a red signal it's always red okay so you come here and you wait here for 3 minutes and why are you waiting just so that your brakes cool down okay and then you go ahead and if somehow you cross this then actually the the line the line is something like this this is the kasara this is the main line where you are going and then just beside that there is a hill so what they do as long as it is red and suppose you have already lost control you have melted your brakes somewhere here only before approaching this then you are diverted on to this this hill okay so what happens the gravity breaks you so you start going up the hill then you will fall down then you will go like that mm -hmm. and you will cradle and then you will gradually come to a stop if you do not derail 
yes okay so so such thing so so it is not such a small thing that okay fine what is the use coming out of it it involves life right and it involves a lot of lot of saving in terms of the maintenance so so it is a it's 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 a boon for railway people right now the second thing is that the second thing is that it is used in in some galvanometers for damping galvanometer damping galvanometer or ammeter or voltmeter damping okay what happens damping becomes a very important thing while designing these instruments what happens you give a current fine the needle starts the needle starts from here and it swings it starts from here it swings goes all the way here suppose that was where it was supposed to stop so it goes all the way here swings back and then goes back and forth back and forth and it settles after quite a long time so someone who has to take 10 readings he'll be so so irritated that that this this meter will be deemed unfit for use so you have to reach there and you have to kind of go like that overshoot and say come to come back fine now what we do we have seen the galvanometers so these were the okay these were the magnets and this was the soft iron core correct now in this magnetic field what we do we 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 add a flag here of a of a non magnetic material and obviously there will be that that see there there is also some magnetic field here it's not that that it ends here okay so what happens due to the ad current the movement gets dampened due to ad current in this so it's a very small thin sort of strip that is mounted but it does wonders in damping it okay so so a thin strip of a non magnetic metal is why non magnetic is mounted on is mounted on hmm if it's magnetic then it will do nothing is mounted on the why why nothing because see the magnetic material has got its own way of reacting right it it might after some time become a permanent magnet and start interfering with the whole chaos right so i do not want it to be a magnetic thing it may get permanently magnetized and it may start interfering with my with my readings right and that is bound to happen since it is there an integral part of it and it will continue there for next 20 years so that happens okay so so we do not want it to be magnetized as well so it is mounted on the core and provides damping by ad currents there is another beautiful use of this which is called induction heating see as long as you are changing the flux it keeps on producing eddy currents so if you keep on alternating the flux it will keep on producing those eddy currents and the eddy currents are currents currents moving in a conductor with resistance means heat fine so so a uh, a rapidly changing magnetic field is used to a rapidly changing magnetic field is used to circulate eddy currents 
and heat up metals okay it heats up the metals so much so that you can also melt them okay you can also melt them melt them okay it melts them fine so alloys can be formed after that there's another very important thing that they have missed out you know most of the bearings that you put on the shafts they are called interference fit you know so there is a motor this is the shaft of the motor and and maybe this is the whole rotor okay so what happens this shaft has to be mounted in a casing okay because it has to move so there is a casing in the stator okay and you have to mount this has to move on a bearing right so so this has to move on a a bearing okay now okay so so this is a bearing okay now how does it hold there the bearing has to hold there how does it hold we actually make a bearing that is interference fit that is actually has its dia less than the dia of the shaft this is called interference fit then what you do you heat the bearing it expands slightly you put it on the shaft and let it cool so what happens it holds it so tightly that at times the shafts break but the bearing stays there you know you know that is instead of maybe holding it with someone but why because because the inner part here where it is gripping this this does not have to slip if that starts slipping that means my shaft starts slipping against the bearing and it will cut the bearing what has to slip this has to remain stationary with respect to this and this has to move right this is also fixed there in the casing so what has to move is the is the ball between the bearing because that's how i'm getting the advantage of the bearing right so so these bearings and and it's something like this you know and wherever in the, in industries you go you'll always find this happening okay so 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 this bearing is there and and you this this is a whole whole arrangement where you mount this bearing over this that there, there is an opening here actually okay so so that is closed and opened and and a current a uh, high frequency voltage is applied here so that induces that induces a flux there in this core and from there in this bearing and this bearing will get heated in in about a minute or so it will reach some 60 70 degrees centigrade and it is sufficiently heated up to take it up away from there hold it with a piece of cloth or something and then then straight away put it on the shaft fine and the moment you leave it there immediately after 3 4 minutes it 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 is ready to go fine similarly for taking it off the shaft you have to do the same thing okay but there since it is in the motor and you cannot mount it here so some oil bath is used and and but but that also is heated by induction heating okay so so bearings are heated by induction heaters heaters and fixed on to fix them on the 